I needed to make a water wheel for school, but I wanted to make one that was easy to build. So the idea was to build one that had internal chambers, like this, not one with external buckets. I used wood and fiberglass for easy construction. Fiberglass is messy, but it is waterproof, light, and strong. You have to mix the fiberglass resin with the catalyst by stirring them together in the correct proportion. Here is our test wheel. How much force does the water in the chambers exert? A bit less than 3 newtons. What's a newton? We'll get there. The problem here is that the force of the water acting on the wheel only creates about 1.5 newtons of force to turn the wheel. That is not enough for the short paddles on the test wheel. This is where Unimath comes into play. We are going to calculate the torque of the water in the chambers and the water spout acting on the wheel. Torque equals force times length. When you multiply force and length, you can, and should, multiply their units too. In this case, kilogram meters per second squared times meters equals kilogram meters squared per second squared. This has been a huge help to me over the years because if your units come out wrong, you did the math wrong. To compensate, we made the paddles 18 and a half centimeters long. So, do you think it will work? By our calculations, the force of the water spout on the wheel is just a little larger than the force pushing down by the water in the chambers. So, it should turn slowly. Yep, it works. It turns slowly. But does it pump water? Yes, it does. The internal chambers work perfectly. I hope you learned something new by watching this video. And remember, when you multiply numbers with units, do the unit math. If you end up with the wrong units, you did it wrong. Thanks for watching, hang loose, and don't be afraid of numbers.